Hello everyone, I'm Marty Pospisil and welcome to my July 2022 real estate market update. Let's jump right into the stats and see what's going on. As most of you know, uh, the metric I use to determine how busy a market is and whether it's favoring buyers, sellers, or balanced is called the sales ratio. And the sales ratio basically <clears throat> is the amount of inventory that's absorbed into the market or sold every month for specific product types. Now, if more than 21% of the inventory is sold in a given month, we're in a seller's market. There's upward pressure on pricing. And if it's less than 11%, it's a buyer's market and there's downward pressure on pricing. If it's between 12 and 20, we're in what we call a balanced market. It's not favoring the buyers or the sellers. So that's the main metric I'm using to see how active the market is. Let's look at my table for July and let's look at detached houses first in the yellow band. Year over year, the activity or the number of detached homes sold uh, in Metro Vancouver is down by 48% from this time last year. The prices, however, year over year for Metro Vancouver for detached houses are up now 13% overall. And this very important stat from last month, the benchmark price has actually fallen 1.7%, the greatest monthly drop in pricing that I've seen um, for many, many months doing these updates. So we can see those prices falling and detached. <clears throat> and for attached townhomes and duplexes, um, we've got a 35% drop in year over year activity. We have a 22% increase in the benchmark price for townhomes and duplexes. And from last month, also again, a 1.7% drop in pricing just from the previous calendar month. For apartment condos, 36% drop year-over-year -year activity, 18% increase in pricing, and last month we had prices increase by 2.2%. So that's interesting. So if we continue along uh, and look at the various product categories, for detached houses on the west side, we are actually down to 10%. So the first time um, this year, Detached houses on the west side have fallen now into a buyer's market. Interestingly enough, there is the history of all the months that I've been reporting on. You can see from last month, we were just into that balanced market. Now we're into uh, buyer's market territory. Remember our peak being back in April um, of the previous month at 28%. And this past April, March, where the market was peaking, uh, we were in a buyer's market at 21% as well. That's detached houses. Let's look at condos, townhomes on the west side, still at 24%, still in a seller's market, interestingly enough. So the attached product is still quite hot, uh, but we're down from 35% last month. So about a 10%, 11% drop in sales activity just from the previous month. So that cooling off is happening quite quickly, but we're still holding on to that seller's market for condos, townhomes. Condos, townhomes, downtown, I separate that out, a little bit of a different market. We're at 21%, still in a sales, uh, in a seller's market. Uh, that's down from 25% in the previous month. And detached houses east side, um, we're seeing a drop down to 14%, still in a balanced market above that 11% mark, but certainly not in that overheated seller's market that we saw throughout the previous year. Remember this April, when the market was peaking, we were at 40% sales ratio, so quite significantly cooler and 4% down from last month. Condos, townhomes on the east side, still the hottest subcategory, 36% sales ratio. So if you still got that home, uh, condo or townhome in the east side you're wanting to sell, you're still in a very good closing window, down from 42% last month, but still very, very strong uh, seller's market for condos, townhomes, Vancouver east side. And if we look at the overall sales ratios, we can see those dropping. If we're looking at a forecast, what's happening? We're definitely in a cooling market. Prices are definitely falling. Um, we can see why that's happening. 
And if we're looking at why that's happening, the main driver, as you're all reading, are the interest rates. So on July 13th, we're gonna look at another big jump, could be as much as 75 basis points. We're seeing interest rates in the mid 5%. Um, things we have, the rates we have not seen for some time, all with the objective of bringing inflation under control. Um, so our federal government's doing everything they can by increasing those rates. That's the main red market deterrent right now in our market. Also, consumer confidence is down, and the reason consumer confidence has dropped is we're also seeing uh, the cost of goods, inflation still very high uh, at 7.7%. Uh, in Canada, we're seeing uh, a lot of consumers now pulling back from making purchases. I've labeled this as orange. It's not pulling it down as much as the cost of borrowing, but still there. Now, pent-up savings, Canadians have saved a lot of money, um, but with the way things are going, looking into summer, from the economy, um, from the cost of goods, the supply chain, inflation, people are holding on to that money. They're not spending it like they were in the beginning of this year. And the one market enhancer that we're still holding on to is the inventory levels. Once that turns orange and um, red uh, and the inventory levels have grown dramatically, that's when we're going to see some major market changes. So we're still at a 30-year historic low for interest levels. They are creeping up. Uh, dropped a little bit in detached. We'll see that later on, uh, but that's what's happening. So consumer confidence, we can see business consumer confidence still above pre-COVID line, but the um, consumer, the personal consumer confidence is down significantly and dropping, and that's mainly due to the inflation and cost of goods. Um, tourism is actually coming back. So um, we'll get a lot of Euro US tourists coming, obviously, non-US also building. You can see that back um, from July, uh, increasing through to spring. That's good. That's bringing some more money into the province. And employment is also up for BC and growing, and so is uh, employment through Canada. And um, if we're looking at employment uh, levels by wage tier, you can see that lower level uh, is still creeping up, uh, but the medium and high wage earners are well past pre-pandemic levels. Uh, unemployment rate, uh, right now in BC, we're at 4.5% and federally 5.1%. Uh, so that is good. We're seeing the unemployment decrease, the employment increase. That's also helping the economy. But <clears throat> I love this emoji. The cost of borrowing. That's the killer right now. Um, and uh, this is just the monthly rent chart I threw in there. Uh, but the consumer price index is quite interesting. You can see these costs just taking off now on goods, uh, everything from gasoline to food to construction materials. All of these items are going uh, out of control uh, and causing inflation to jump up. You can see some big jumps here in gasoline, uh, transportation, uh, recreation, education. Everything is up even from last month. Uh, you can see that we've got significant price increases taking place there. And as I mentioned, inflation for Canada at 7.7%, still below the U.S. at 83 But again, that fiscal policy tightening, um, uh, what our federal government's doing with the increased rates, it has the objective of bringing this down. They like to see it at around 2%. So these rates will probably continue until we're able to bring this inflation rate down. Um, so that's quite interesting. Now, the Consumer Price Index measures price changes, but inflation or the cost of living is the change in spending by households required to maintain a given standard of living. So that's the difference between inflation. People usually think it's the same thing, but it is a little bit different. Mortgage rates, uh, the forecast is for those rates to continue to climb. As I mentioned, um, on July 13th, we're going to see uh, likely another jump in rates. Uh, that's going to have more impact on our market as well. Uh, and uh, pent-up savings, yes, the money is there. Uh, a lot has been spent. Uh, but again, with this inflation, people are holding on to it a little bit tighter. Interest levels. So this is interesting, or inventory levels, new listings and starts. So we've got home sales. You can see we have a big drop as of April dropping down. We've got our housing starts. We're a little bit up, but also quite low still. New listings, 
we're still seeing at very low levels. When you see the new listings take off, uh, that's when it's going to turn as a, uh, into a red market deterrent. Um, and if we're looking at inventory levels, you can see where we are here. That's the one thing holding the prices more or less where they are now with these slight drops that we're getting. Um, and if we look at the west side for houses, this is interesting. We just had a, a very marginal drop in our inventory for detached houses. Um, for condos and townhomes on the west side, that's continuing to increase in the inventory. Again, holding quite steady. Average prices, now this is quite interesting because this graph is quite dramatic. Um, detached houses, you can see the drop already being reflected in the average price graph. Same with townhomes and half duplexes and also with apartments. So we're starting to see one of these jagged uh, peaks that we've seen over the last many years. The question is, how far will that go? Nobody knows. Um, and if we look at the um, MLS housing price index, you can see uh, for uh, Vancouver West, you can see that's the rise we had up until our March, April market. And then it's been dropping down and the factors bringing it down are of course the BC cooling off period, which is coming uh, to fruition very shortly. The interest rate increases like we talked about now is bringing those prices down, higher taxes, federal policies that they're talking about, uh, bringing in more taxes for people who are selling within a year and a two year ban on foreign home buyers, all of these programs, federal government, and the consumer confidence is falling. Um, blind, uh, banning blind bidding has not been introduced yet, could come. And of course, the listing inventory surge has not turned red yet because it hasn't happened yet. But these are the two outstanding factors for our forecast. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but the trend is looking like it's continuing down and the media is reflecting this, um, calling for 10 to 20 percent and in some of the articles higher in price drops through Canada. That is my July summer update. I hope you enjoyed it. Lots of stats to digest. If you have any questions, um, feel free to pop me an email, marty at pospitalrealty.com, um, and subscribe on YouTube and like us on Facebook so you get these updates as they come out. I'm Marty Pospitalrealty. You take care. Hope you're enjoying your summer and enjoying this beautiful weather we're having.